What's going on, guys? We're here with Justin Massey, or is it Macy? Massey. Justin Massey. I said it right the first time. You Cheers. got it. Yeah. Cheers. Uh, you had some questions for Alex specifically. Well, I had. Well, let's see. So, so one of the questions that I wanted to ask you is, which is relevant to what we were talking here with with Alex, rosin yields. Like, how does that work? What is what determines it? You know, so you have hash, your trichome heads, and then you squish them. What's the determining factor about how much rosin you're going to get from squishing them? Can you just explain how that works for us? There's a couple different factors going on. Um, the, the chemo type of the hash, what the ratios are of the chemicals and which chemicals are inside that trichome. Um, the maturity of the trichome itself, uh, as well as how you decided to load the bag and the amounts you use. The less, the less heads you put inside of that micron bag, the more of an even surface area you, you have acted on, and the quicker the rosin can leave. So you're not losing volatiles and you're not trapping things in there. If you have, say, 40 grams of hash in a three by six bag, uh, you're gonna get closer to the, your 60% yield. Whereas if you did 20 grams in that bag, you would get closer to the 80% of that yield. Um, just by the action of the the oils not being able to escape and at a certain point the mass becomes a sponge as you lift up pressure it sucks up any warm oil back uh, or it just physically wasn't able to escape the bag um, the other thing is the, the second thing i mentioned was the, the ripeness the maturity of the head um, as the the trichome head ages you end up with a thicker skin so the ratio of what is desirable to non-desirable um, grows apart as the trichome ages because it's building up a thicker cell wall and the formation of the beneficial psychoactive and aromatic particle creation, that, that metabolism has dropped down at this point. It's, it's getting lower and lower and lower. Um, you see this when the trichome starts to become amber. Those heads have a thicker hull or a thicker shell. Um, and then just the general quality of the pull you put in um, by micron size. If you press 45 to 25 micron heads, you're never gonna get higher than a 60% yield. That, that size range just has only been able to generate so much TACA and has only been able to shove so much into the vacuoles. So hold on one second. What is an average yield and what is a good yield then? An average yield, I would call 75%, and a good yield is 90 to damn near 95, 98. Um, there are some phenomenal pulls uh, that will just really, there's By nothing weight. left. By weight, yeah. Um, there's really nothing left but the very, very thin water balloon that was holding it together. And those were those super, super, super big uh, clear heads that you were seeing. You know, those would be the ideal ones. It's really where that aromatic content is coming from um but you can get as low as yeah 60 70 percent on average i would say is like reasonable if you're doing commercial outdoors or something like that um and a full spectrum hash of 45 microns to 165 microns like the frenchy method you can expect 60 to 70 percent yields and what happens to all these little bags that are left over from the pressing portion of it? Uh, ideally, they should be infused. Um, I know some makers will uh, do solvent extraction on them. Um, they're, they're pretty good fodder for distillate. You know, you can do a quick wash with ethanol and get what's left, uh, distill it and end up with, you know, a clean product. Um, I like to do uh, topicals with it personally. Topicals, interesting. It's a lower grade. It has a, a high rate of decarboxylization at this point, especially if you've done a second press on it. Uh, but there's always a little bit left. Whether it's a percent or two, um, there's always a little bit left in that pocket. So why why squish your hash? Why make rosin in the first place? I mean, because you couldn't make full melt. What's the point of having full melt? Who cares? You get the absolute 
flavor. You you really get the true profile of the plant with nothing interfering, nothing's burning, nothing's coagulating, there's not chlorophyll interfering, um, and you didn't lose anything. The whole factory, you are dabbing the factory as opposed to what came out of it. Um, no one presses six star hush. You won't find anyone on the market doing that. They say they're doing it, they're probably lying. Why is that? Because there's no reason. You can sell full melt hash for a higher price for one thing than you could ever sell rosin to a smaller demographic. So then that, but, that begs the question. So then they're squeezing the rosin because it's not great trichomes to be Or their with. goal is to heads. make rosin and they aren't trying to attain full melt hash. If your plan is to make rosin, you're robbing yourself by trying to make full melt. You should be making five star. There's going to be something left in that pack. Full melt hash, when pressed, has the lowest, the highest loss because of how much actual rosin is trapped in the bag itself. What you're saying is that pressing doesn't necessarily add anything to the. It good. makes it more dabbable. That's really right. it. That's why rosin so it's, it's became popular. It's there to popular. solve a problem, not to add something to the process. Exactly. Honestly, if your your ice water extract or your dry sift is good enough, you can dab it. Whether it's one Q-tip, two Q-tips, three Q-tips of a cleanup in your nail, that's that's a whole other thing. But the goal is one clean swipe. Fair enough. What was one of the questions I wanted to ask you? I'm not sure. I didn't. I didn't make the list of questions. It's on my phone. Oh. Damn it. <laughs> I've never seen a single member of the French side of my family eat French onion soup. I don't think it's French. French onion soup. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, just when I go to this side, it like keeps. You okay, see how okay, it keeps okay, tilting okay. this way? Ah, yeah. The camera's learned to avert my gaze. <laughs>